Here at Niagara Falls, 2.6 million liters of water falls over that waterfall every second. But you ever wonder how it got that way? Today, let's explore the geology of Niagara Falls. I'm Luke, and this is Polymathy. So what is the setup here? We have the Niagara River, which is draining Lake Erie and other Great Lakes through this. It's an enormous space, but it's rather small compared to how much water there is. And those massive bodies of water, they're all draining right through that. Now, what we see here is a cliff. Why isn't it just a smooth continuity all the way down to the ocean, which is some hundreds of kilometers that way? Well, the reason is that this is actually an escarpment. An escarpment is where you have differential erosion, where you have the same forces of erosion, in this case predominantly water-based erosion through rain and rivers and streams, but the rock is of a different hardness. The rocks that underlie this stuff that I'm standing on now are softer. The foundation of what I'm standing on here is primarily dolomite and limestone, and that's relatively more resistant to erosion than the rocks that are underneath. So if you can imagine the cliff face here, which is part of this immense escarpment it's called the Niagara Escarpment that makes this huge horseshoe that goes all the way through this part of Ontario, through the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, and back into the United States. At the base of it, the rocks are softer down at the bottom of these falls and in fact everywhere along the escarpment. And for that reason, they get eroded more easily. Then what happens is when those softer bits of rock underneath are eroded, the harder stuff, the limes and the dolomite, it just collapses in, creating a cliff face, an escarpment. It's just differential erosion. The rocks that form the escarpment here were deposited millions of years ago in the Silurian period. The harder dolomite rocks were deposited in an inland sea, in a shallow sea. It's hard to imagine how different these places must have looked 200 million years before the first dinosaurs roamed the earth. Geologists have given the name Laurentia to the ancient landmass that would become the continent of North America. Back then, it was mostly just a collection of large islands oriented at the equator. That's how far the continent has moved due to continental drift. Imagine Caribbean or Indonesian tropical islands and seas. In some places and time periods, the sea level was higher, allowing for the formation of carbonate rocks, the eroded remains of innumerable shelled sea creatures. And where and when the sea level was lower, the land eroded, creating shales and mudstones. Those 400 million year old shales are what are eroding at the base of Niagara Falls protected by the erosion-resistant dolomites and limestones that were deposited when the inland sea had advanced again over top those shores, drowning the islands that once were there. The world of geology and science in general is endlessly enriching, and I strongly believe everyone should have the opportunity to attain scientific literacy. And one of the best ways I've seen to help people achieve that is through Brilliant, this video sponsor. I was honestly surprised how good Brilliant is. Now, I have two degrees in geological sciences, so I wasn't expecting to learn so much right from the first lessons in foundational science. Here you can see some of the fun I was having with the introductory lessons that I was going through. So Brilliant has way more than I thought it would when it comes to legitimately fun and interactive courses on math, chemistry, physics, and what really amazes me here is that I feel like I can finally fill in all the gaps I have in calculus and advanced chemistry and physics that I might not have needed when I got my first degree, but that I could really use now in order to become a more professional geologist. Something else I find so exciting about Brilliant is that I feel like a kid again, and not because the concepts that Brilliant teaches are inherently easy. On the contrary, I found them challenging in a really pleasing way. But more importantly, they're just so well explained. Because when I was a kid, I loved learning things about the natural world and engineering, how gear systems work, how planets stay in their orbits. And I'm really impressed that Brilliant makes science and math simultaneously accessible to anyone. So if you're just a language nerd and you wanted to get a better intuition of science, this is a great opportunity. I am also shocked that Brilliant is capable of advancing the higher level knowledge of an expert. That's really excellent pedagogy. So if you want to try it out for free for 30 days, you can do that by going to brilliant.org slash polymathy, and the first 200 to sign up get 20% off a year subscription. Geology is fundamentally the application of all math and science, 
chemistry to understand mineral compositions, physics for the structural geology of mountain ranges and volcanoes, math for deposition rates of sedimentary rocks. This is how we have such a vivid picture of the world in the Silurian period, when the rocks at Niagara Falls are first deposited. Bedrock exposed under the atmosphere was eroded into the basin of the ancient sea that was once here, and calcite rock precipitated from the waters of that sea, rising to cover it again. So that's how the different kinds of rocks got there. But the reason that all of this water is here has to do with glacial geology. North America used to have a huge ice sheet covering it, and the terminus of that giant glacial ice sheet was more or less here. This is where, it, when it would melt in the summer, it would retreat more or less to this spot right here and go all along where the Great Lakes are. The Great Lakes formed as that giant ice sheet melted. Then there's all this water there. Well, that water has to find a way out eventually. It just can't all seep into the ground. So it did eventually find a way. Life finds a way, water finds a way. Water is extremely good at finding a way. And the way it found was right here. This is the lowest point about 15,000 years ago to 12,000 years ago as the Ice Age was ending. And all of that water found a place to get out of this, essentially, this, this basin area right at this escarpment. But it wasn't actually right here. It used to be downstream about 10 kilometers near Lewiston, New York, in Queenston on the Canada side. Well, if that's where it was at the end of the Ice Age, how did it get here? Well, waterfalls like this usually migrate because with 2.6 million liters of water crashing over the edge every second, you can imagine there's some erosion going on. Until a couple hundred years ago, the erosion rate was about a meter every year. So the waterfall would retreat by about a meter that way every year. Now, because there's been some hydroelectric dams that have reduced the water flow a little bit, the erosion rate is more like 30 to 40 centimeters a year. That's still significant. And in this diagram, we can see how the erosion has been observed over just the past few centuries. In 1678, 1764, 1819, and 1842, where Niagara Falls used to be all the way up till the present day. That means in a few tens of thousands of years, this waterfall is going to continue to migrate that way towards Lake Erie. And eventually it'll hit some softer rocks and this dramatic waterfall where we have the, these hard rocks creating this, this nice cliff face, the escarpment, it won't be as prominent anymore in tens of thousands of years. So we happen to be extremely lucky to live in this page in the great book of geological history to observe it because just a few tens of thousands of years ago, this didn't even exist because this was all under a giant sheet of ice in some places as thick as three kilometers. And in the future, the whole Niagara River will have just become the bottom part of the waterfall and it won't be nearly as dramatic, especially when it starts to cut into Lake Erie that way. But another really cool thing to imagine for all of the incredible splendors of the natural world all around us that are created by interactions of life with rock, these geological processes, just imagine how many amazing waterfalls like this have existed on the earth in different times in its history that no longer exist. And think also, millions of years from now, where will there be another amazing dramatic waterfall just like Niagara? What I want you to do is to join me here on this channel as we open the great book of geology and go through the pages of its amazing history together. Thanks so much to each and every one of my Patreon supporters. Make sure to like and subscribe. Walete. Look, it's Canada. It's my first time seeing Canada. Hi, Canada. Friendly salutations to all of our neighbors to the north. I haven't seen much of your country yet, but from what I've seen so far, it's absolutely beautiful.